Hello, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. Last night I came across two articles uh, about the United States vehemently opposing a special uh, vehicle for payment and trade between Iran and the European Union. Now I could see the significance of this straight away, and although I was exhausted at the time I recorded a video on this, it seems that some people do not share this view and cannot see the significance. And I was even accused by some trolling piece of turd of clickbait, something that I take particular exception to seeing I don't make a single cent from any of this and often have to sweat stuff out, often when I'm exhausted. I have nothing but the greatest contempt for those who respond with this sort of comment without even bothering for a minute to check for themselves with just a quick Google search. Uh, such creatures, products of an education system that has dumbed people down to the extent um, that they can't think for themselves, are just uh, beneath contempt for me. At least you can be open. But people don't know how to research either. Last night in my quick reading of the article, it seems that the EU had only just announced that Instex had been introduced literally while the G20 is standing, was sitting. But it seems that the Europeans announced this back in January and it is only now uh, that the Americans have uh, re responded. So I'll just play a, uh, a quick video and this goes back, I think, to, uh, to March. Um, a joint commission meeting between Iran and the remaining signatories to the nuclear deal known as the JCPOA comes to an end in Vienna. Iran says the European financial mechanism known as INSTEX designed to bypass US sanctions is now a tangible idea that goes beyond papers. We hope that in the coming weeks uh, INSTEX could become operational. Uh, this is for all goods and commodities, not only uh, humanitarian goods, but maybe it starts from uh, humanitarian in order to set the patterns for doing business with Iran. And once the patterns are set, then uh, other uh, kind of uh, goods, including sanctioned goods and oil, of course, would be added uh, to this mechanism. Iranian Deputy Foreign Minister Abbas Adokhshi says an Iranian mirror structure is set to be established very soon to work with the European institution based in Paris. The mechanism is meant to enable direct non-dollar payments between Iran and Europe and in the next stage between Iran and non-European entities. It is late but still uh, uh, move in the right direction. We told our uh, colleagues in the JCPA Joint Commission that uh, creating a financial channel is only one commitment amongst a long list of commitments they have made after the US withdrawal. These other commitments are in areas such as trade, energy and transportation and the Joint Commission, Arochi said, has decided to create working groups in these areas to find mechanisms similar to the financial one to do business with Iran. Experts representing the UK, France, Germany and the EU plus the German manager of INSTEX are expected to travel to Iran soon for further discussions. Homadeski, Press TV, Vienna. So, um, basically, um, from the European point of view, it was supposed to only be for humanitarian assistance, not for Iraq. Uh, paying for Iranian oil. So this has become a hot bone of contention for the Iranians, which is why they've been putting such pressure on the gutless Europeans just in the last few days or weeks to actually act on, on, these, on their commitments. But the Trump administration doesn't want a bar of any of this. No trade with the Iranians. Full stop. And they will sanction anyone who does. 
Trump unilaterally withdrew from the nuclear deal, the JCPOA, last year, and then withdrew exceptions. So uh, that um, the Chinese and Japanese, Europeans and others could no longer buy uh, Iranian oil and uh, they've been uh, received dire threats of sanctions, etc., uh, because of that. So when Trump is threatening half the world with sanctions, does anyone think for a minute that he's going to back down to accommodate allies that he's already shown that he holds in the greatest contempt? So for me, the biggest question is whether the Europeans will suddenly develop a backbone, something that they have singularly failed to do up till now, or whether they will act in the way that was suggested uh, in the article that I read uh, by Hal Turner of uh, withdrawing funds from US banks. I've yet to see uh, some proof of that. I've little doubt that Trump, true to form, will retaliate. So this does, unless the Europeans back down, uh, because, uh, because Trump won't, uh, it threatens to turn very, uh, very nasty in what is already a fractured world. So I'll just go briefly to this article. This goes back to... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, yeah, no, no, this is... The, this is... This is um, this is current. So I'll read this. This is from the Maritime Executive. After extended diplomatic talks on Iran's threat to exceed nuclear treaty limits, the European Union announced Friday that it was finally launching an alternative financial mechanism to facilitate international commerce with Tehran, circum uh, circumventing US uh, sanctions. So Hal Turner was correct. The barter mechanism, INSTEX, is part of Europe's attempt to salvage the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JCPOA, or Nuclear Deal, which saw Iran cease work on its nuclear program in exchange for lifting of international sanctions. The United States unilaterally withdrew from the agreement last year, reimposing strict sanctions on Iran's oil exports and effectively closing off Iranian access to Western financial markets. Iran has so far complied with its part of the nuclear deal, according to international monitors, but has threatened to exceed the agreement's limit on uranium enrichment if Europe does not do enough to offset the effects of American sanctions. Instex is part of a year-long EU effort to maintain commercial ties with Iran, but until Friday it had not begun operation. Instex, now operational, first tr uh, transactions being processed and more EU member st states to join, said Secretary General of the European External Action Service. Helga Schmidt said in a tweet on post Friday, Instex is targeted at trade in essential goods, food, medicine, humanitarian aid, but is not expected to handle payments for Iranian oil. Energy exports are key to Iran's economy and to the operations of the Iranian government, and Tehran has made it clear that it wants to see European oil purchases if it is to remain in compliance with the JCPOA. All very understandable from my point of view. It is not enough and it is still not meeting Iran's expectations. I would certainly report back to Tehran that developments which took place in this meeting, the progresses we have been made in this meeting and the final decision obviously would be by Tehran to take. Iran's Deputy Minister Abbas Aragchi said after talks on Friday. The United States made it clear that it opposes Instex. Brian Hook, the special US Special Representative for Iran, said Friday that European nations cannot do business with the United States and Iran at the same time. Europe-based multinational corporations have already reached this conclusion and a few large enterprises are expected to 
to renew business ties with Iran using Instex. Countries don't do business in Iran, companies do business in Iran, Hook said. We have not seen any demand for European companies doing business in Iran because they would much rather do business in the United States market than do business in the Iranian market. If you look at trading volumes, the EU does more trade with Kazakhstan than it does with Iran. So put that in your bloody pipe and smoke it. So I'll just go to this article, um, which I decided last night not to read because I was so tired. This was uh, from Zero Hedge. US threatens Europe with loss of access to US financial system over swift evading Iran SPV. It's going from bad to worse for Europe, whose currency had just hit season session lows after Brussels confirmed that Italy faces a massive fine over its debt when the euro was hit with a double whammy after Bloomberg reported that the Trump administration is escalating its battle with European allies over the fate of the Iran nuclear accord and is threatening penalties against the financial body created by Germany, the UK and France to shield trade with the Islamic Republic from US sanctions. According to Bloomberg, the Treasury Department's Undersecretary for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, Sigal Mandelke, sent a letter on May the 7th warning that Instex, the European SPV, to sustain trade with uh, Tehran and anyone associated with it could be barred from the US financial system if it goes into effect. As a reminder, last September, in order to maintain a financial a relationship with Iran that can not be vetoed by the US, Europe unveiled a special purpose vehicle to bypass SWIFT. Back then, we predicted that Washington would not be too delighted with this development, seeking to undermine the dollar's reserve status. Did you get that? That Washington would not be too delighted with this development, seeking to undermine the dollar's reserve status. We were right. I urge you, carefully consider the potential sanctions exposure of Instex, Mandelka wrote in the letter to Instex President Per Fisher, engaging in activities that run foul of US sanctions can resolve, result in severe consequences, including a loss of access uh, to the US financial system. So this is not the, uh, the world policeman, this is the world bully. Germany, France and the UK finalised the Instex system in January, allowing companies to trade with Iran without the use of US dollars or American banks, allowing them to get around wide-ranging US sanctions that were imposed after the Trump administration abandoned the 2015 Iran nuclear deal last year. Not surprisingly, a senior admin official behind uh, behind the ITA or whatever, I don't know what that is, uh, said the US decided to issue the threat after concluding that European officials who had earlier downplayed the significance of Instex in conversation with the Trump administration were far more serious about it than they had initially let on. The official who asked not to be identified discussing internal deliberations, said the letter was intended to serve as a warning that the US would punish anyone associated with Instex, including businesses, government officials and staff, if they were working to set up a program to help Iran evade US sanctions. This is a shot across the bow of a European political establishment committed to using Instex and its sanctions connected Iran counterpart to circumvent US measures, said Mark Dubovich, the um, chief executive officer of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies in Washington. 
When asked to comment on the letter, the Treasury Department issued a, a statement saying entities that transact in trade with the Iranian regime through any means may expose themselves to considerable sanctions risk and Treasury intends to aggressively enforce our authorities. At the heart of the latest US move is the argument that Iran and its central bank use deceptive financial practices and haven't implemented minimum global safeguards against money laundering and terrorism financing, according to Bloomberg. While it is obvious that the US ire was sparked by the realisation and alarm that cracks are appearing in the dollar's reserve status, opponents of Instex argue, at least for public consumption purposes, that the mechanism is flawed because the Iranian institution designated to work with Instex, the special trade and finance instrument, has shareholders with links to entities already facing sanctions from the US. This, this is what um, Turner was saying last night. Meanwhile, during a visit to London on May the 8th, Mike Pompeo also warned that there was no need for Instex because the US allows for humanitarian and medical products to get into Iran without sanction. When transactions move beyond that, it doesn't matter what vehicle's out there. If the transaction is sanctionable, we will evaluate it, review it, and if appropriate, levy sanctions against those that were involved in that transaction, Pompeo said. Uh, it's very straightforward. Well, that's just a liar's way of saying, well, we will sanction. In 2008, 18, Europe made a huge stink about not being bound by Trump's unilateral breach of the Iranian deal and said it would continue regardless of US threats. But now that the threats have clearly escalated and Washington has made it clear that it won't take no for an answer, it will be interesting to see if Europe's resolve to take on Trump, especially in light of the trade war with China, has fizzled. Well, that was exactly my uh, my question. So this is, uh, well, I think it's, in any case, it, this is very, very serious because it involves three parties, the Americans, Iran, and the EU somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah, so I'm sure there'll be more of this, but I don't expect that uh, outside of, say, Bloomberg and Zero Hedge to hear anything of this in the near future. So that's me. Um, that's uh, Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.